Hey, I'm David, and welcome to Thai Talk. Today, I'm here with the superintendent, Ms. Forsten. Thank you for coming today. Absolutely. Thanks for inviting me, David. <laughs> so, I know that you have a background in school things. <laughs> Would you care to talk about that? Sure. I started my teaching career here in Concord and was over at Runlet when it was Runlet Junior High School. Wow. It used to be 7th, 8th, and 9th graders. Um, which was a little bit different than it is today <laughs> totally. with 6th, 7th, and 8th graders. So I taught there for a few years. Then I moved on to teaching in a um, psychiatric hospital for a couple of years with children who were struggling with behavior and with chemical dependencies. And then I moved on to teaching at an elementary level. And then I became a special ed coordinator for a school district. Then moved on to assistant principal. I was an elementary principal and then Worked assistant the superintendent. Ladder. Yeah, there is that whole ladder sometimes in education. So and that was my uh, segue to becoming superintendent. So usually, it's not everybody's goal to become the superintendent one day. Did you, <laughs> at, when you were a little girl, were you thinking, you know what? Superintendent's the place that I'm going to be someday. Or <laughs> um, No. When I was uh, very young, I thought that I would be a tap dancer um, and that that go. would take me away. <laughs> and uh, that didn't happen. My dreams changed pretty quickly <laughs> as I was like eight and nine years old and things started to move in a different direction. Yeah. Um, I come from a big family. I have um, three brothers and three sisters. There you go. So there was always a lot of people around. Yeah. So I've always enjoyed being with people. So I knew that whatever I wanted to do in my life, it would include people. Yeah. Then I started to babysit as a teenager and really started to think about how to support kids in their learning. Um, and that's when I started to think about becoming a teacher. I was a sophomore in high school when I made that decision. There you go. Usually it is in high school when people are like, you know what, that's probably what I'm going to end up doing. Yeah. Um, so I guess how has the school year so far been? It's been good. It's fun. It, uh, when you go into a new job, there are the predictables. And then there are the unpredictables. Yes. So uh, the predictables, things like opening day, when mm. you meet with all of the staff all together. The first day of school with students, I had the opportunity to walk through our schools and see what wow. does it look like when there's students in the schools, as opposed to July and August when you the guys were here. The ghost town. That, that's right. <laughs> that's called a school. So it was fun to see kind of teaching and learning in action, which is always a favorite. Mm. Um, and then those unpredictable things like um, this principal show. searches in this <laughs> show. <laughs> but principal searches. Um, so looking for a new principal for Concord High School, mm. looking for a new principal for Beaver Meadow School, oh, wow. and then now looking for a new principal for Runlet Middle School. Wow. Um, so that's a big deal. Three rungs of the ladder all being swapped out. That is. So I guess since you just brought it up, Tom Sicka, or Mr. Sicka, the former principal of well, the current principal. The current, of Ronald, thank Ronald, that's you. Let's just be clear. <laughs> uh, has been chosen as the replacement for Mr. Connolly. Sure. What qualities did you look, or did the people looking for a principal look for when they were searching? It's yeah. a good question, David. We had a large committee. Um, the first piece that I did was I came over and I met with faculty here at Concord High School. Mm. We had a conversation about what are the um, important characteristics for a new principal coming to Concord High. So we talked about things like communication skills. Mm. We talked about things like visibility. Yes. We wanted a principal who is out and about in classrooms yeah. and in hallways. You'd want to see your principal come into your class sometimes. That's yeah. right. It's kind of an exciting moment yeah. when they come in. And it's you... like, oh, is my teacher going to be weird now because... <laughs> <laughs> Teachers do sometimes get a little nervous yeah. as administrators come walking through. Um, so do students, I think. But Definitely it's students. It's really <laughs> exciting to get out and into classrooms yeah. and see kind of the impact of teaching and learning, to see it mm. live. It's exciting. So students have been always wondering, when that snow day gonna happen? <laughs> so I guess the question is, what decisions are made for a snow day that to happen? Sure. So generally speaking, the day before a snow day, there's this forecast. And all of my best friends, including 
um, teachers and principals and uh, administrative assistants, students will say to me, have you seen the forecast? <laughs> have you seen the forecast? Just to make sure I'm paying Bugging attention. Bugging you a little bit. That's right. So I don't miss it. Um, and then I do have a process where I look at the weather one more time before I hit the pillow that night. And then I get up about four o'clock in the morning. I know. <laughs> Can't While that. you're sleeping, dreaming of a snow day, <laughs> I'm actually considering whether or not is it um, worth it? We need to have a snow day. So I work with um, other superintendents in the area. I look at several different weather forecasts. I also have a resource um, from a meteorologist who calls me personally to let me know there what the go. forecast is for our region. A superintendent's personal weatherman. It's kind of exciting. He's, uh, <laughs> although yesterday when he called and he said, well, it looks like the freezing rain and drizzle won't stop until about 11 o'clock. Oh. I said to him, that's not good. That's <laughs> not helpful. Um, so we went with a delay yesterday. Um, and then we had to move it to a closing because that drizzle just wasn't going to no. let up on us. So. <laughs> and ice is not something we're going to fool around no. with. So th the ice at school, I know this is going to sound weird. Usually, it's some rules at some schools that we're not allowed to mess around with snow. Oh. I think <laughs> this has become an issue because of snowball throwing and people slipping on ice. Okay. Thoughts on that? I know it's a weird question, but I know some people are like, why can't we just go play in the snow? Sure. I'm all for playing exactly. in the snow. Exactly. It's that snowball throwing. You have to yes. be so careful of There is sometimes ice in the snow. That's right. Or little rocks or even a mm. snowball can just be a little overwhelming. So mm. we have to be careful of that, particularly at the, uh, well, really across the ages. Mm, um, definitely. But Kindergartners get into a lot of chaos. <laughs> <laughs> they have been known to, as have ninth graders. No. Oh, is that so? <laughs> uh, I guess, do you have anything else you'd like to say to uh, students and parents who may be watching? I think uh, one of the things that I've been really impressed by here in Concord School District is um, the number of opportunities that we have for our students here in our schools to be part of a variety of um, athletic options for kids, um, performing arts, mm. academic studies. We really have well-rounded programs. So that's what I would love people to really think about for themselves, Explore. for their students, for their children, um, for students to think about that. What am I going to put my energies into? What is going to be important to me as I go through Concord School District? To help out with. That's right. Well, uh, thank you, Mrs. Forreston, sure. for your time today. Hello everybody, and welcome back to Tide Talk. I'm your host David, and today I'm here with a very involved member of the Concord High community, Nick Scafidis. Welcome. It's good to be here. So, I guess we should get right down to business. Okay. What do, you, what, is, what do you do for Concord High School? Uh, I do uh, a lot of various different things. Um, mainly, I'm known as kind of like the video guy. Um, there's always been those like one to two people who have always been there, and so I um, I currently direct uh, CHS Live 
for Concord High School. That's the uh, video announcements, I'm sure you know. Um, I also run a club called the CHS Film Society where we um, teach people how to um, you know, make films and direct, which you are actually a part of. I am a part of. I am very proud to be a part of that, Jazz. Well, I'm, I'm glad because <laughs> we try our best to um, try and teach you guys some of the best things. So uh, I guess I'm known uh, widely as the video guy because that's basically what I do in the CHS community. Now... I don't think every, I'm pretty sure a lot of people end up falling into video stuff, but why did you want to do CHS Live, Film Society, where you was a friend just one day, yo, let's, let's go do this, this looks crazy maybe. Well, I got into filmmaking uh, or video making in general because um, it was kind of a, a hobby that my dad had. Um, but it was also something that kind of just drew to me, like a camera and videotaping and documenting different things was just something that was very cool. Um, and when I came to Concord High, I finally got the opportunity to do that because throughout elementary and runlet, the only videotaping thing you could do was like the announcements or um, at Beaver Meadow, they had this like quizomatic time where you could record yourself. Remember that? Yeah. <laughs> and so um, I got to join the film society with uh, Pedro Pimentel, who was the president at the time. And, um, you, know, you know, with Conquer TV, um, we got to have the opportunity to uh, use the studio, to use the cameras, to learn how to do different things. And then that sparked my curiosity even more. Um, to join CHS Live, where we film um, and do the announcements in here, too, and I got to use all the cool equipment. And so I guess just from the start, I got to thank uh, the Film Society for helping me get into and learning about how much stuff I get to use here, and that really sparked my curiosity into uh, making different types of videos. So you said you pretty much run CHS Live. I, that's the best way to put it. Uh, did you just know from when you joined that you're like, I'm going to be a part of this and I'm going to make it mine? Well, when I first joined, um, I do believe, let's see, I joined when I was a sophomore or junior, I believe. And I started out as a techie uh, where I would, um, you know, roll out the cords, plug them into the microphones. And then I believe I became the sound guy where I... Um, uh, did different levels of sound, and that's what I did for the first year. I actually didn't plan on being the director um, or even think about it <laughs> until maybe the end of my junior year um, when Ryan Sweat, the current director, was graduating because there really hadn't been talk about who was going to be the next director. And then one day, um, the beginning of the senior year, uh, Mr. Connolly comes over to me and he says, do you want to be the director of CHS Live? What are we going to do about this? you want to do it? And I'm like, oh, uh, you know, I, uh, I, I, uh. I guess so. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I was, um, I gratefully accepted the role of being uh, the director, and I'm very happy of uh, the show that I'm currently running right now. So you're in charge of a lot of things. You also mentioned that you're in charge of Film Society. Mm -hmm. How did you get into that position? Um, well, currently, I am um, one of the presidents of the Film Society. We used to have a one president rule, um, but thanks to uh, Dominic Scotty, uh, we have a co-president system now. Um, and we do that because we feel like one person shouldn't have so much power. Um, we've learned from years past that having a one person power sometimes doesn't work. Um, and I got into that role, um, I believe, two years into Film Society. Um, and I never really thought I was going to be president. I don't think many uh, presidents from uh, any club really expect to be president. Um, and so it was kind of brought on to me suddenly, just like see, just live. Um, we had elected someone to be a president, but the person quit. And so the position was kind of just dropped on me. And, you know, as a leader, I felt like, you know, I, I really should pick this up. I, I'm not just going to drop this and be like, you know, I, I can't do it. Because sometimes you got to step up to the plate for things like that. And so I stepped up to the plate, asked Dom to be my co-president. And, you know, I don't regret anything. And I'm uh, very happy to have been the president. And um, I'm excited to pass it on to someone else this year. Ooh. Uh, how has Film Society changed over time? Have you been there since freshman, first off? Oh, yeah. I have been there since freshman year, and it has changed a lot. The club 
Oh man, it was it was very small when I joined freshman year. Um, it's pretty big now. Oh yeah, this year we had about thirty members join us. Um, when I was freshman year, we probably had about ten. We had ten <laughs> people in a, a small room who gathered and just kind of talked about films. Films are cool. Yeah, yeah. it was like that. We we just sat there and we we would do um, some projects uh, and we would make the films and that was it. But this year, um, especially, we have taught everyone, yeah. you know, what it means to be a filmmaker, certain techniques, and we've been letting them do their own projects. We used to do one big project altogether, but I was ask about that. yeah, we we um, we did a big project with together. only ten people. Are you do you just all work together on one thing? I don't think you're gonna be able to set aside three people to work on a movie. Yeah, you, and, you, you see the flaw in that. Yeah. There's 10 people, and generally in a film, you need the crew and the cast. There's not, you know, if it's a small film, you're not going to need a huge cast. And for crew, you only need sound, maybe lighting and cameraman yeah. and director. And so that's four people. So when we were doing these big group things, especially, you know, during my sophomore year when we grew from like 10 to 14, um, it was just people were sitting around not doing anything. And people would get bored and they would leave. And we would all get frustrated because it was like, come on, we all need to do something, but we can't. And so um, I think it was my sophomore year um, when I was handed a presidency. I was like, that's one thing I'm going to change. I am going to um, not be a control freak and just make everyone do something that they may not like. I want to guide people so they can create their own things. Because I know myself, I like to create my own things. I wouldn't want someone coming over to me uh, for CHS Live and be like, this is what you're going to you're do. You're the president of Film Society, not the dictator. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> There's no dictators in the Film Society. We, uh, we all work together. Um, I heard there's some upcoming events for Film Society. Would you like to divulge some information on that? Yes, we, uh, we have uh, our annual film festival that we do. And um, believe it or not, last year was our most successful uh, film festival to date. And um, we had over 80 people show up in the auditorium. And we had over 20 watchers on a streaming um, website called Twitch. So we got people from all around the world to watch. There you go. Um, and the, compared to what we did uh, freshman and sophomore year, I believe it was sophomore year where we had about 12 people show up. 12 people showed up. And <laughs> were I, most of them from Film Society? And well, <laughs> yes, but also people who were just friends and you know parents and stuff. And it, it was really downing because we were like, we work so hard on this yeah. stuff, but no one's coming to watch. Mm. And so... You know, that was another thing I wanted to do when I was president. I was like, we need to... Hype this up more. Yes. And so this year specifically, we have a whole bunch of stuff. We learned stuff from last year. And we're taking what we learned and we're putting it into this year's film festival. This year's film festival is going to be on May 25th. Um, that's a Wednesday. It starts at 6 and it's going on to about 8.30 to 9. Uh, we're hoping to get about a dozen films this year. Um, we got probably about eight or nine already planned in the film site alone. That's not even asking outside people, but we encourage everyone from around the world to submit films because it is a celebration of films. And we have quite a few things that we got up our sleeve this year, including um, you know, special guests. Uh, we may have a voting system for best film. Uh, and we also have some uh, special sneak previews um, that we are trying to uh, see if we can get for the film festival and all of the other stuff will be explained as we get closer and closer to May 25th. So as a person that is in film society and has never had anything really to do with it before, well, I've been a part of Conquer TV programs plug, um, how does the festival usually work? What happens there? Well, um, there's a lot of different things that go into making the film festival. Um, right off the bat, as soon as school starts, me and Dom, like I believe it was the third day of school, we went over to the office, we went into the auditorium um, office, and we said, we would like to book the date for the film festival for May 25th, <laughs> Wednesday at That this early. Time. That early. We started in September. We already had the date booked. <laughs> auditorium is ours right then and there. So that's the first step. Second step is teaching everyone in the film society about films, and getting the word out that the film festival will be coming, so start working on your films. 
Um, the next stage, which we will be entering in March, is promoting. Uh, so we want to be like, hey, we got our films. You know, you guys should get ready for the festival. It's coming soon. Broadcast. Yeah, there's a lot of different things. Uh, there's contact in different medias, yeah. uh, talking to people, you know, just getting the general word out. And then once the actual festival comes, we have to plan, you know, technical stuff like people who are going to run the films, the lights, the sounds, who's hosting, uh, who's going to be there, what special events and stuff are we going to have. Um, you know, all that stuff. And it can be very stressful at times. I can admit that I have been very stressed when doing it, but it's all worth it in the end. So, as a freshman, I am a very stressed boy. <laughs> How did you end up getting around the stress of CHS Live and Film Society? Don't make this deep. But <laughs> what did you end up doing that was like, all right, I can handle this? Um, well, during freshman year, um, you know, it's a very stressful time because you're, you know, you're changing. Um, you're going from, you know, middle school to high school. There's all these new things, there's clubs. And honestly, as you go, you get obligated to do more things. Like as a freshman, honestly, I was not that busy compared to senior year because, you know, uh, freshman year, you're really making a name for yourself. So, you know, if you continue to do this show that you're doing right now, you know, people are going to know you for that. <laughs> <laughs> and so, you know, you're going to feel, you know, people are going to feel more obligated to be like, hey, do you want to do something for me? Or, you know, can I be on your show? Or um, if you become something big with CHS Live, people will come to you. And honestly, I mean, to avoid stress is just, I definitely think sharing with your friends about, you know, what exactly is going on. Just talk to people. Because that, that's why me and Dom, you know, work together. Because um, I, if I get stressed for the film festival, he um, works on some of the other stuff. And so, um, you know, just keep your head on straight. Uh, don't stress out too much. And, you know, just, you'll, you'll be, you'll be good. <laughs> so, we're going to have to wrap it up here. Thank you, everybody, for watching Tide Talk, and thank you for joining me today. Oh, thank you for having Hopefully me. Hopefully we can have you again sometime. It's, it's been a blast. And uh, see ya, everybody.